And you can keep an eye on the mute. So I want to thank everybody for joining the first uh, community workshop on downtown Markdale. We're doing a community visioning session this afternoon. We are really happy to be involved in the project and excited about the conversations we're going to have today. My name is Donna Hind. I'm a partner at the Planning Partnership. And we've been asked to help Gray Highlands uh, go through this process of coming up with a vision for downtown Markdale. On the call today is one of my business partners, Yying DiGiorgio, and she's going to wave her hand. And then also Robin Chubb, turn your camera on just for a minute. There you are and wave your hand. They're both uh, landscape architects and urban designers. So together, we're gonna to be uh, facilitating the conversation. We're gonna start with a presentation to show you some of the initial things of what we've heard so far, and then some ideas that we have for the site. And we've got lots of time before we end for a really great conversation. A couple of things, we're, we're being uh, helped along the way with a really terrific steering committee. And the steering committee is comprised of Michelle Harris, who's the Director of Economic and Community Development in Gray Highlands. We also have Krista House on the committee, who's the Economic and, and Community Development Officer, Karen Govan, who's the CAO of Gray Highlands, and then three terrific people from the community. Um, Jim Harold, who some of you may know from his role as on the um, Economic Development Advisory uh, Group for Great Highlands, and just wave your hand, uh, Jim, so people see where you are. He's a, a Gray Highlands resident and has tons of business, municipal, and economic community development experience. He's an adjunct professor um, in, of economic health geography, which is in the field he earned his PhD in. So he's got great uh, contributions to the steering committee. And then Elizabeth and David Sysom, wave your hand so they see who you are. Um, David is the founding principal of a firm Montgomery Sysom Architects and a member of City of Toronto's design review panel. And Elizabeth is the former, um, I never know whether it's a, a uh, what the A stands for, Elizabeth, Vice President, Associate, Executive Assistant, Associate, Vice, Associate. Associate Vice President Planning at U of T, and then more recently, the Associate Vice President of Planning at Harvard. So they both bring tremendous um, input to the committee, and they've also been residents of Beaver Valley in the Markdale community with their three kids. Um, in a farmhouse, they've lived there for 30 years. So we really value the insights they've brought to the group so far. And also on the call today, you may uh, recognize in the names, the list of the participants, there are lots of members of council and staff that are listening in to the conversation. So really appreciate that. And the value of recording the sessions is that I know councillors will be listening to both sessions and um, making sure They've heard what the community has said about the ideas in progress. So with that, I'm gonna start. Um, you know what, first off though, Robin, can we have, can we launch the first polling question just to help us understand uh, who's on the call? So this, I'd like to do this just so uh, people know who's, uh, where you're calling in from. So I wanna know if you live within a 10 minute walk of downtown. Markdale. So just take a second and let me know the distance that you're walking in from. And we have, yeah, we have 25 people on the call, which is fantastic. So most of you don't live within a 10 minute walk of downtown. So that's interesting. Let's, um, let's end the poll then, Robin. So there we go. Only 20% are within a short walk. Okay. So I'm going to stop sharing that. Thank you very much. So to get you oriented, here we are. You can see on the screen that I'm sharing a Toronto Street Highway 10 is where my cursor is going north-south and Main Street, Gray Road 12, east-west. And these, this is the boundary of the lands we've been asked 
to look at as part of the visioning exercise. This is about uh, two acres where my cursor is on the west side of the road. And on the east side, it's 0.3 acres. So a tremendous amount of property that really has an opportunity uh, to change the character of downtown Markdale. Here we are, you're always gonna see the site outlined in red here where my cursor is. And this first yellow circle, five minute walk to the main intersection, 10 minute walk to the main intersection. So you can see this is an ideal situation where there's a town or a village center and you wanna have as many people as you can within walking distance of the core. So here we are. Here's the municipal office down here where my cursor is, the Dollarama grocery store down here at the bottom of the screen. And what you're seeing on this drawing is we've overlaid what we've come to understand are some of the current uh, development applications in Markdale. So new residential neighborhood right here where my cursor is, future hospital down here on the other side, two other developments up here on the right hand side. And all of this is fantastic to get more people living within walking distance of the core and hopefully supporting the shops and services um, in downtown Markdale. And we've highlighted some of the other community uh, facilities and amenities in Markdale. We had a chance uh, several weeks ago to connect with some of the councillors and some of the business owners in Markdale to get an idea of um, what their ideas were for downtown Markdale. So we had lots of conversations, lots of ideas were shared. So this is just a snapshot of some of the things, some of the ideas that people shared with us. And we asked, you know, what, 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 why is Markdale suffering or what, what's happening in Markdale? And these speech bubbles are all some of the things that I heard from the conversations that I had. So people said, um, you know, that, municipal office should be downtown. There's not enough housing. There's competition from other kinds of retail. There's loss of a food store, talisman clothes. So these were all the ideas that people thought contributed to some of what we're seeing in downtown Markdale now. With respect to the larger context, um, they talked about ideas of going beyond those red outlines on the map that I showed you and looking at the hospital the existing hospital lands for future redevelopment opportunities or other properties to purchase and to think about an idea of kind of nodes and corridors in the bigger gray highlands context that the need that development really needs to spur additional economic development in downtown markdale and that to showcase use this um, visioning exercise to showcase all the fantastic things in Grey Highlands with respect to landscape and innovation. People shared lots of ideas about possible uses and you can imagine, I heard lots. And for everything that I heard about being a good idea, somebody else said it was a bad idea. And that's often what I hear when I'm asking people their ideas about a, a site or a, an area that there's different opinions as you would expect. So about the library, about having space for seniors, about needing more housing, almost everybody I talked about, talked to recognized the opportunity of having more people live close to the town center. Retail space, um, in, the importance of including public space, urban space to draw people to the, to the center, things like theater, arts, auditorium, cultural center, community hub, swimming pool, offices, having a band shell, medical offices, a greenhouse. We're gonna show you in the plans that Waiying is gonna walk us through how we're gonna try and come up with a, a plan that any and all of these uses could find a spot in the scenario that we're talking about. In terms of new buildings and kinds of buildings, people uh, talked about the height, um, talked about buildings on Main Street, especially the buildings that are fronting on Main Street and opportunities of having the back also be great uh, contributors to the space. Um, buildings that can't be higher than the fire hall. So just the ideas that people shared with respect to buildings and development and then traffic and parking. 
I have never done a project in a town center where people said, haven't said, there's not enough parking. Yes, there is enough parking. Parking isn't the issue. Yes, parking is the issue. So it is absolutely that we're going to, something that we're gonna address through this exercise and try and make some recommendations on. So let me walk through just a little bit of mapping that sets the context for what Wai Ying is gonna talk about when we drill down into the red boundary area. So let's start with what the official plan says with respect to land use designation. So here we are, um, the area within which our site sits is all uh, designated as a downtown area. So it's this light pink uh, code. When we look at the zoning, again, here's our site that we're looking at in detail, and it's within the zone of downtown commercial. You can see the hospital is called out as institutional. When we look at open space, we're mapping on these drawings, the arena and the park, the school, the golf course, the cemetery, CP rail trail. So we're just looking at what's in proximity to the core area. We're looking at where there's trails or sidewalks. So the, the yellow line is mapping where there's a sidewalk on the streets. Here's our red area. And again, reminding everybody five minute walk and 10 minute walk and the CN rail trail. The roads, we know that Highway 10 is a provincial highway. Gray Road West of Highway 10 is a collector road, county local road, and then municipal roads, the local roads in the residential neighborhoods and on either side of the, on all sides of the site that we're looking at. Parking. And under so that we, condition, any amount that is oh, I'm just going to, there we go. Um, in terms of parking, we've mapped where there's private parking, public parking, on-street parking, and done a rough cut of a tally of the parking that's uh, in the downtown area. And we map the, the private parking lots as well, because as everybody, everybody knows, that's absolutely part of the inventory if you're running into the, the bank or running into the, the shops along Main Street the car repair. So they, they're really important contributors to the inventory. Heritage, the designated heritage buildings in red and then the orange colored buildings have heritage value. The two amazing churches here as you come up along Highway 10 of Victoria Avenue and a lot of the buildings along Main Street. Building Heights, so generally it's two to three stories when we look at the main street buildings, but there are some buildings that are just one story. And then a little bit about small town Ontario character. We look at other um, towns and villages that we visited, Huntsville, and Aaron, Bracebridge, Alora, And we look at them just because we're trying to understand what are the key contributors in those situations that make for successful, vibrant downtowns, Creemore, Paris, Ontario, Cannington, Coburg. So when we squint our eyes, we've wandered around all of these downtowns and have done work in lots of them and try and understand what their core attributes and characteristics are. We're seeing that well, typically they have brick construction, typically they're two to three stories in height, they're primarily small stores and often independent stores. They have a variety of um, building styles. They're walkable and most often directly connected to the residential neighborhoods. So there's an easy way to walk on local streets and get to the main streets. And that many of them have just beautiful views and connections to the surrounding landscape. And when we put together a list of what we think are the ingredients for healthy, successful downtowns, 
we find that in a, most of those places that we just shared, and I'm sure everybody on the call has their favorite downtowns that come to mind. They have beautiful tree-lined streets, urban squares and parks that are really important contributors to the space. We've got lots of reasons to come downtown. So there's events, attractions, there's uses that generate pedestrian traffic. And we've heard often people refer to the power of 10, that there has to be 10 reasons to come downtown, that it's convenient, that when people come, you can find, it's easy to figure out where to park. It's easy to find public washrooms if you need them. There's reliable hours of operation. There's seating, there's amenities. There's a critical mass of people that live close to the town center so that they can support the shops and services. That most often we see in town centers, big and small, that the private sector has confidence in coming to downtown because the public sector, the municipality is investing in those downtowns and they can see that investment in public space and streetscape improvements. That most of the places build on the character and the existing assets of that specific location and that they always have a mix of shops and services and restaurants and cafes. Um, we were really happy to find the historic photos and to really look at them and carefully and realize carefully and realize how amazing Markdale has been through history. And these uh, photographs absolutely show what it was like through the past few decades. And I have to say just a moment on the call that I'm sure everybody on the call knows about the documentary that's being shown on the um, TVO's hot dog series right now on Gray Roads and it's a history of Markdale and we've watched it and it's really an interesting documentary to watch. So where, what are the opportunities for change? And so we are um, looking at Main Street, we're looking at the site in particular. So here we are looking at the fire and ice here in the background, the old fire hall and our site, both sides of the road. I'm gonna turn it over to Wai Ying now to just walk through a little bit of the early thinking that we have uh, on the site. First look, yes, thank you, Donna. First look at the larger context. So um, on the screen, when we look at the broader context of Markdale, both within the five uh, and 10 minute walk, as well as beyond, the importance of the downtown that's highlighted in pink is apparent, um, very apparent. As a geographic center, as well as the commercial core of the community, it has a pivotal role in the health and vitality of the community. The purpose of this diagram that we put together is to illustrate the downtown, uh, illustrate that the downtown is actually an integral part of the community and to identify a potential future structure uh, that will enhance this role. So the conceptual plan that you're seeing builds on the character and assets that already exist. And so I'm gonna go through some of the things that are highlighted on the right-hand side of the, of the, of the uh, slide, and that's the legend. So I'll go through each one of them sort of generally. For example, I'm gonna start with this, uh, this idea of the, of the natural heritage that frames the community. And we've called it the green frame. Uh, what this does is it provides a natural boundary that wraps the community and the opportunity to further develop a connected trail system that's shown in the dashed yellow line. Uh, that in turn is linked both to the existing as well as potential future neighborhoods and village fabric. The second thing that you're going to see is that the existing rail trail is an amazing recreational asset and Don has mentioned it on earlier slides and access and visibility to this feature should be enhanced and so we're highlighting it in that. Um, can you see my cursor if I do this? Uh, so, or maybe maybe Robin you can help me with maybe. Or can you see, can you see my cursor? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, so the yellow, the yellow line on the left hand side of the slide, so big swath of the CM, the rail trail. Uh, we're also showing in the green lines, this idea for green streets, and this is important because it needs to highlight these connections to open spaces and natural features, and I think we should recognize these as special links, but then also uh, overlay them with enhanced streetscape elements, whatever that might be. 
Uh, similarly, uh, Main Street uh, and Toronto Streets are important primary corridors. Those are highlighted in the big red arrows that intersect at the crossroads. Uh, these should be enhanced. While they're not necessarily green corridors, they are, they are, they are gateways to the community and, as well as the downtown. And design along these corridors should focus on promoting and supporting a vibrant animated environment. So where these uh, two main corridors intersect with the green frame that we've identified, we're suggesting that this idea of community gateways uh, shown in the, in the red circles could be developed um, with opportunities for things like uh, signage, trailheads, landscape features, and even potentially public art elements. Also on this diagram, um, we're also showing these orange so the orange arrows are representing a grid. And so this grid is saying that- Oops, sorry. We, oh, there we go. There yeah. you go. Yeah, so the orange grid is indicating a suggested uh, connected system of future either roads or sidewalks and pedestrian uh, walkways that connect the existing fabric and knit the existing fabric with the green frame that we're identifying. So uh, with all of these combined elements, the intent is to reinforce connectivity, as I mentioned, um, reinforce the character of the community and promote the identity of Markdale. It's to make movement through the community easier, safer, and more enjoyable. It's to highlight special places, locations, and destinations um, shown in the asterisk and to promote unifying and linking elements that stitch the many parts of the community together. This is the context in which the downtown and the subject lands will be considered on the next several slides. Next slide. So before we get to that, I just wanted to go over a couple of um, ideas um, to be taken into consideration as well as uh, some of the takeaways that we got from the many conversations we've had uh, earlier in this process. Uh, these principles speak to what we've heard thus far, including the desire for more variety in uses um, and housing in the downtown. It speaks to the importance of drawing people to the downtown, including visitors as well as residents. Um, the importance of having more pedestrian oriented downtown that will also make it attractive to people who wanna visit or live there. We heard a lot about the natural rural setting of the town and the desire to maintain relevant connections to its agricultural heritage. As urban designers, we fully appreciate the important role that public space has in attracting people and promoting vibrant downtowns. And of course, we also understand the sensitivities uh, around development in smaller historic communities and promoting developments that are compatible with its context um, will be important to the existing and future character of the community. So on the next several slides, we're gonna illustrate and describe a few scenarios for development on the subject lands that build on the context that I described, as well as provide the opportunity to demonstrate these, the previous guiding principles. Um, so in this scenario, one, we're working within the property uh, boundaries of the municipally owned lands highlighted in red. Uh, we've illustrated new buildings uh, in brown and new landscape elements in green. Buildings on the west property are arranged to frame Toronto Street and complete the corner of the northwest corner of the crossroads. The buildings are envisioned to also frame a new village square that's situated along Toronto Street. We imagine that there will be active commercial and workspace uses potentially within the ground floor of all of the buildings in the downtown with residential uses above. Uh, the at-grade residential uses may be provided within that central building as well in the portion that transitions to the west. So where those little lines are dividing up the units, that's where we're imagining uh, front doors um, and residences. Uh, on the, sorry, uh, on the east property, at the corner there where the bank is. So on the east property, we imagine uh, an infill development of live work type uses with a similar kind of muse condition facing the fire and ice site. Working with the idea of the landscape means we imagine that the lands, uh, landscape walkway could be combined with a more robust patio space to make the fire and ice restaurant a more vibrant destination to, to come and, and hang out. Uh, with this scenario and the following scenarios, we're recommending a rebalancing of the streetscape street zone to better and more safely accommodate pedestrians in the downtown. 
What we mean by this is minimizing the private access driveways along the street and carving out more space for sidewalks uh, that are separated from the traffic by a landscaped boulevard. Um, it's outrageous, yes, but fundamental to the health and vitality of the downtown. Uh, we're also imagining that with the introduction of these landscape boulevards, there could be opportunities to promote the rural character using curbless or rolled curb uh, scenarios with naturalized planted swales or bioswales or bioretention swales and a variety of local tree species, grasses and wildflowers. You'll see also in this scenario too, as with the others that Main Street, the Main Street buildings, particularly those that, that were identified on the heritage slide are maintained. So next slide, Donna. Mm -hmm. There we go. Thank you. Uh, in scenario two, we're showing a possibility for collaboration with the adjacent properties on the corners to open up the opportunity to create a more robust corner landmark building in these important locations. We're also suggesting that these buildings could be slightly taller. Uh, this would, of course, allow the potential to generate more GFA, more residential units or other uses, uh, and create more vibrancy and activity downtown. Everything else about the scenario is simil similar, consistent with scenario one. So I want to also use this uh, particular um, concept to point out a notion for reimagining the entrance to King Edward Park and the library site and the realignment of the Caban and Walker Street intersection as a landscape turnaround. This concept seeks to enhance the prominence of and access to this important destination within the community while also improving the way pedestrians and cars navigate the streets. Should we go to the next one? Next slide, yes, thank you. Cool. So in this uh, last third scenario, we've taken a step back to look not only at the municipal properties and the corner sites, but some of the immediate areas of the downtown where possible long-term development may be considered. Uh, the illustrated buildings and public spaces and streets, just as with the two previous diagrams, demonstrate what a mix uh, and variety of uses could look like, including additional housing. The diagram shows a direct and strong green link all the way uh, east-west from Isla to the, to the park and library uh, site. It shows more green space where the existing parking lot is on the, on the park as well. So that really is the bookend to the new park and the existing park. And what we're also trying to show is that the arrangement of buildings demonstrate the key principles of framing streets, creating front doors and eyes on the streets and transition of residential forms away from the core. Okay. So sorry, before you leave. Yep, there yeah, we go. Point out that because we're showing a potential long-term, you know, development possibility on the existing hospital site, we're also with that showing the potential relocation of the cenotaph onto the new village square in the central with that with the red star, yeah, right there, or somewhere in there. Okay. Thank you. There we go. Okay, so then that, uh, those are the three scenarios. And so what I wanted to do with the next several slides is highlight, if, highlight the, the few, the key moves or takeaways from all of the three scenarios. The first one being um, that we want to make sure that there's a mix of different uses. So the pictures on this slide show you what those could be in terms of residential, street related commercial with residential above and different styles of um, architecture as well as expressions. Um, but definitely a, a wide range of new uses, including residential are possible with all three scenarios. The next slide, please. Um, the second big move is framing, um, framing the streets with buildings and animating public spaces. And these few examples show you what a village green could look like when buildings are fronting it with active uses at grade that really spill out onto that space. We're showing an idea for uh, patios along the main street as well. And then, of course, uh, on the bottom, two uh, other examples of what could happen in the winter in terms of activities and draws to the downtown and uh, what site furnishing and a whole array of sort of pedestrian amenities could do uh, to keep people downtown. We think it's really important, too, that animation and activities be brought into the downtown. And the, these few examples are showing you, again, winter activities, nighttime activities, as well as uh, the idea about public art introduced into the downtown, as well as simple things such as just paving um, that could really animate and tie the spaces 
together. Next one. So when we mentioned some of the reconfiguration of the streets uh, downtown, I think one of the, the most, I guess, starkly obviously th obvious things to us when we, we did our site visit was, um, I guess, the lack of green in the downtown and the predominance of paved areas. And so this, this move is about greener, safer, pedestrian-oriented streets. It's about recalibrating um, the priority of, of, of movements within your public corridors to give pedestrians space. And so some of these examples show, for instance, you know, having a sidewalk, simple as that, introducing more trees, um, the idea of a landscape muse that I described on one of the concepts on the in the center, lower center um, photograph, and then just places to sit and gather, uh, as well as maybe promoting uh, people to pay more attention to their front yards and encouraging things like urban agriculture and gardening, even in the front yards. Next slide. Um, we talked a little bit about a main street strategy. I know that on the three concepts, we said that the main street buildings were not intending to um, change them in any way. But I think what, what we noticed was lacking was uh, the streetscape element, the street furnishings element. And I think there's an opportunity definitely here to have a program that starts to look at coordinating and putting down some, I guess, rules and guidelines about what those buildings um, how those buildings could become better contributors to the to the public realm, things like um, signage and windows and awnings and a consistency and coordination to how we deal with them with a with a strategy in place. And then uh, ideas about when opportunities come up, how we can carve out um, you know space within that limited boulevard to have spill out areas for cafes and seating and, and such things as furnishings. And I believe the last one again is this idea of the greening opportunity. Um, and I spoke to that a little bit earlier. So some examples of, you know, if we were to carve out or sort of minimize some of the existing um, uh, private access points, carve out space for the sidewalk um, and boulevards, how we could treat those areas and plant those areas so that they have an aesthetic um, function within the downtown, but also have a, a role in managing stormwater and taking water um, and dealing with infiltration as well. So that kind of, that was, okay, so sorry, that sums up the big moves. The next couple of slides, yeah, this one, uh, we wanted to show you what all of um, the ideas that we're presenting today could look like uh, if we were to reimagine the existing corner as we see it today. And then with the new buildings and streetscapes and, and um, treatment of the public realm, what it could look like um, at some point in the future. So that's a view from the South. You're going awfully quick. Sorry, to I'm sorry. <laughs> so we're, so we're looking Northwest. We're looking Maybe Northwest. I'm going too slow. Okay, so next slide. Sorry, I'm just muting a couple of people. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, so, so the next slide is showing yet another. Yep, there we go. Uh, from looking from, I guess it's the pharmacy, the building just north of the fire and ice, looking west at the vacant site today, what it could look like in the future, potentially with that village, village green, village square in the foreground, um, the building, the mixed use building with commercial uses at grade in the, in the middle ground. And then in the background, the idea of that muse, the landscape muse continuing to the west with those front doors and um, residential units at front right on to that. Okay, so that um, brings the presentation to a close and I did, we did have a, a few questions that we wanted to put out to everyone on the call and we can certainly go back to any plans if we want to uh, talk about them in, in detail, but before we um, get into the specifics on the plan, I wanted to have a more a general conversation with people on the call. We've got about 27 people that have logged in. I want to understand from your own perspectives, what do you think are the ingredients for successful, healthy, thriving town centers? And, and in describing that, I'm happy to hear places that you think are great examples of healthy, thriving, successful town centers. Um, and so because there's 
It's a relatively manageable size group. I'm happy to have you um, turn your cameras on, wave, and I'll, I'll, I'll ask you to share your thoughts. You can also use, there's a, a reactions button on the bottom of your screen and in there, if you click on it, there's a whole bunch of icons <laughs> and you can raise your hand or you can use any one of the icons that's in there and I'll know that you have uh, something that you wanna share. But I see Tasha, you are first up in the queue. So go ahead, turn your, turn your mic on and let's hear your thoughts on this. Well, my thoughts are that you guys have done a great job. Thank you very much. Um, say that. Included many of the things that I would answer to these questions. Trees and green spaces, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Um, the, I, I like that you're drawing attention to the library. Initially, I was thinking that I would suggest the library move to that main corner um, rather than be tucked away where it is now. Uh, because I know certainly as a, as, a, as a traveler myself, I use public libraries anywhere I go. <laughs> yeah, that, that is a really good point. Yeah. Yeah, because you know that you um, can get Wi-Fi there. And let me go yeah. back to that. I'm going to go back to that map. Yeah, keep going, Tasha. Uh, sure. Um, and and the, and the other thing that I, I think um, Mark Dale could incorporate into sort of more public uh, building space would be something that highlights something like a museum, not necessarily a museum, but something like that that highlights okay. heritage and can be a starting point for heritage walks around the beautiful town, et cetera. Okay. Um, are, there, are there town centers, village centers that you think are great examples of where all the raw uh, ingredients come together? I, I, I haven't thought of that yet enough to come up with okay. something, but okay. obviously you put on some good examples, Bracebridge okay. and yeah, yeah. Um, the, the thing about accommodation is really important. And I think that covers both for uh, affordable accommodation for people living here, but also uh, visitor accommodation. And, and of course I'll, I'll sort of flip over to the Beaver Valley visit, visioning that most people here are also probably familiar with that, you know, we don't, I personally don't think that we need to build big hotels in the Valley. We can put big hotels in Markdale, which mm -hmm. really would like to have the people coming to there. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm curious, one thing about this big plan, which I generally really like is <laughs> that old parking issue the parking has disappeared where where has that where does mm -hmm. that go yeah why well, do you want to do you want to just a few points about parking in that yeah so with any of yeah so with any of the um scenarios that we're illustrating we're uh assuming that parking not only for the new uses and residents within those buildings but also replacement of the existing parking could be accommodated either Partially at grade, I would say, and then partially um, in a structured scenario, whether that's um, below grade or whether there's, there's a portion above grade. We obviously haven't gotten to that point yet, but we would assume that parking would be addressed through the new development of both of both sites. Okay, yeah, well, yeah. Well, there's, yeah. So sorry, the intent is there's no net loss of um, there's no loss of parking, it would be replaced. Right. Okay. Yeah. But there, but it sounds like there may need to be an increase in parking. Increase. And the other thing that I probably should have mentioned and didn't um, was that there is an. We talked about an overall strategy for increasing the on-street parking capacity. You saw that in the earlier slide. We had done an inventory of the existing, and so there's lots of room as we were driving around with some of these very wide streets. Uh, within the within the downtown, there's lots of opportunity to increase um, designated on-street parking areas. Mm -hmm. Okay, good, good. Um, there's just one other element I'd like to to mention yep. that. Oh, if I may. Yeah, go ahead. You. Um, the with the public green spaces, uh, sitting areas, and so on and so forth. It would be really nice to incorporate in this plan a community garden. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that is a terrific idea. 
And we're hearing about that in many of our projects that people want that incorporated into public spaces. Isn't that right? I mean, we heard a lot about that yeah. in some recent work we did in Aaron, and that is a terrific idea. Mm -hmm. so, and the more visible, the better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. So on, I don't know if you noticed on scenario three when I was walking through that rather quickly that um, the replacement of that front area. Don, if you want to go to scenario three, yeah. there's an area that we've reimagined the parking that's there. We've reconfigured that intersection so it's a more ceremonial entrance to the park, but there's green space in there um, where I think a community garden would actually be a perfect fit. Right there. So where it says green link on the label on the right hand side. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Tashar, did you mean to mute? Oh, there you go. Yes, I yes I did, but I forgot that I had. <laughs> okay. okay. Between downtown and the library, I yeah. yeah yeah seems like a potential. Yes. Okay, that is great. So let me just go back. Sorry, on that note too, I believe the town is actually working on a um, a town wide community garden strategy at the moment. Hmm. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's hear from others on the call. Any other ideas about the raw ingredients? Yep, go ahead. Um, it says Christopher. <laughs> so go ahead, Christopher. <laughs> he's, he's here as well, but it's Mallory. Okay. okay. Uh, I, just, I just had a couple of comments on the questions that you posed. Yep. You know, what makes a vibrant downtown? Yeah. And then some examples. I think uh, the thing that came to mind for me is people. So visitors okay. to downtown, yeah. right? So when I think of the the cool downtowns that I'd want to go visit, like Huntsville or St. Jacobs, and you mentioned Aaron as well as another one. Yeah. You know, the thing that they all have is um, tourism and people who want to go there. Yeah. So I think in order for all of those wonderful things that you put forward, which I think are great so far, I think the key ingredient is uh, getting people there because I don't know that just our current population would be able to um, support that. So that those are just my thoughts. Okay. Yeah, so having something, some kind of draw that visitors will want to stop. And I think we've all been to those places. You're going past great towns and villages and just something strikes you and you want to stop and get a coffee or have lunch or wander around. Okay, that is great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so being welcoming to, to visitors and tourism. Yeah. Open to everything that brings, yeah. Okay. Okay, who else? Yep, go ahead, Betty and Roy. Um, I uh, I like what I see. Um, one comment about parking, and then I have another comment, yep. is uh, looking down the road, say, 20 years from now, yep. um, Highway 10 is not going to get any less traffic. It, you, you can expect quite a bit more. Yep. Um, and if you couple this with tourism draws, if they're if they're built into it, the town. Yeah. Um, parking on a, on a main drag, I think if, the, if it's solid parking because of the number of people that want to come into the downtown area, uh, it's a real distraction. You lose a lot of the urban character, the openness, Person, that's a personal perspective from my point of view. And I would expect there could be some si the situation where eventually Highway 10 driving through the core could be a choke point for traffic. And that would put real pressure on uh, or to eliminate parking on, on Highway 10. Mm. Uh, yeah. So okay. uh, I, I see uh, when I when I saw the presentation, my question was, how do you see the parking demand? Uh, I would change. say uh, change over Changing. time. Yeah. And yeah. I'm not sure that's uh, fully thought out based on the drawings I saw there. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. The, uh, the other thing is, uh, yeah, I lost the thought. I'll stop. It's okay. Um, <laughs> it's, um, it, it's interesting, and I know why you probably want to weigh on this a little bit. Because we've done uh, 
lots of working town centers that have highways through them. And I think if you just think in your mind's eye of Highway 2, where it goes along and it's Port Credit's Main Street and it's um, Oakville's Main Street and it's Coburg's Main Street and or think of Young Street or Highway, t- Highway 10 as it goes all the way down from north to south. And so um, having a highway, a provincial highway through a a downtown isn't necessarily, doesn't have to be a detriment. Um, We can look at those places to see how they've accommodated parking, especially a place like Oakville, accommodated parking and the changes in in traffic over the decades. And so there's some interesting lessons learned in a place like that. Mm -hmm. And the lesson I learned from a place like that is they, um, they don't let it stop them from having a beautiful downtown Oakville with beautiful sidewalks. And in fact, some of the photographs I think I showed you showed were Oakville. Were they Yiying? Um, some of them, in not in this presentation. Okay, um, but it hasn't stopped them from having really lovely sidewalks and beautiful no. uses along uh, along the way. Go ahead. Yeah, I think, it, yeah, sorry, I just, just to add to that, I think, in fact, that, you know, when we do travel, you know, across Ontario, and we do, obviously, small towns all cropped up because they were on highways, right? So, you know, what started them is now sort of, um, you know, people feel it's a detriment to them. But I think, you know, when you come to the downtowns of any place, um, you know, the speed kind of comes down, not only because it's posted, but because there's a whole host of <laughs> other... Um, visual cues within the environment like buildings that start to come in to a smaller scale buildings that start to appear closer together you start to see a whole bunch of things happening um, within the environment that slows traffic down and i think from our perspective and we've heard this from many people it's actually a good thing for downtowns when traffic is slowed down because you want people to stop take their time and stop, stop and, and yeah and pull yeah. over and, and and shop and spend their money there so it's actually mm-hmm. a good thing i think with um with the opportunity to redevelop both of these sites the idea of narrowing the street because right now it really does feel like a provincial highway and you know our idea is to the and the intention is to transform it so that it doesn't feel necessarily like a highway anymore so you know people are walking on the street on you know on safe sidewalks and you know there's trees and there's furniture there's buildings there's things to look at there's signage there's paving there's all of that whole host of things uh, within that within that environment that'll create a completely different atmosphere that's the hope (laughs) okay let's hear yep there's there you go sandra go ahead Hi, everyone. Thank you for, uh, for allowing me be, to be here today. Um, having come from the area originally, and then, of course, like a lot of us, we leave, do our careers, and then come home again. Mm-hmm. Um, we've seen a lot of change in town, and we've seen a lot of change in the growth, which is really fantastic, uh, especially for supporting with services and healthcare and whatnot. What we're seeing, of course, is the push of people to our area, mm-hmm. COVID. Um, and what's that, what that has pulled to us is a significant traffic increase. Um, I'm one of the people who can actually walk to downtown in five minutes. Okay. Very grateful for that. Um, the limitations that are there today, uh, we make best to do with. But having something that is a physical draw for people will, is a necessity. Um, think of, you know, go to Dover, you're going for your pickerel mm-hmm. dinner. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> right? So, that is um, right. What we've, what we've witnessed, of course, with our new grocery store, uh, what comes a lot of infrastructure like a stoplight, something as simple as a stoplight that come May 2 4 weekend, we now engage in the lineup to try and go through town. It begins May 2, 4, it ends Thanksgiving. I've witnessed up to 10 kilometers back um, of traffic jam. Thank you for that light at Foodland. <laughs> <laughs> so those kinds of things, you know, working with our, our transportation people yep. um, and our, our team at the uh, municipal office is imperative, obviously. Yep. The one thing I really wanna call out is uh, pedestrian safety. Um, the way we're going into the future means a lot more people, a lot more, um, machinery and the two just don't 
blend well together. Um, I have been able to witness um, some really interesting ways of moving people across streets at a single intersection. Um, I think we really need to consider that your standard uh, green, yellow, and red light um, needs to be enhanced um, to identify perhaps we need a, we call it a five way, um, you know, the left hand uh, or the left hand turn is one thing, but having a, a dedicated time to where traffic can go every direction at once. Mm -hmm. um, it's a real safety net in the sense people are not going to be harmed with the expected growth. Okay. Okay. Um, that's just a little bit on the traffic flow. I think we, on, on a separate issue, um, need to really hone in on the pride that we have in Grey Highlands for our history. Um, mm -hmm. Right from, you can go back forever, but talk lumbering and milling and mm -hmm. agriculture. Um, you know, we had the, um, um, oh, there's just so much history. I can't even think of anything. But also, where do we go into the future? There's a lot of push on today for um, a focus on the environment, mm -hmm. a focus on protecting our environment and um, things like solar and wind en energy and making sure that is part and parcel of how our public spaces grow or are presented. Yep. Um, lights, as an example, um, our night sky has disappeared in Markdale and okay. for our gazer, um, it's extremely sad. Okay. And there is such an, um, a whole industry on how to protect the night sky with mm -hmm. specific lighting. And it would be really cool to say, you know, Markdale is the forefront runner in protecting not only our natural environment, but truly the original um, natural site called the sky that doesn't exist anymore. Okay. How do we protect that? How do we bring it back? Um, you know, water is, is a very large component of Grey Highlands. We're also, this area is a, um, a protected area. So how do we make sure that um, water is part of our future? We've got a great new water tower. I can see it from where I am right now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's just, it, it's the cosmetic side of it, um, how it dedicates to the environment. Okay. Okay. Thank that, you, Sandra. Wayne, do, do you want to do you want to weigh in on anything like in particular the intersection and the some of the ideas that Sandra was talking about the scramble yeah. intersection and other yeah. ways of safely moving people across the street. I think those are all great ideas, and and we know of um, you know many different ways to design an intersection as well that. Um, can make pedestrian movements a priority or safer, you know, raise tabletops, all that, all of those kinds of things can be done. But I think one of the one of the constraints that we're dealing with too is that because it's a provincial highway, and we were told at the outside of the study is that there's very limited um, intervention, design interventions, you know, remodifications of any of the roads or intersections that we can have an impact on. So I think that's one of our challenges. Um, I'm not sure I have an answer to that, but I think that's that's where we're kind of um, uh, stumped in terms of um, having any major um, major major impact on the intersection and the road rights of way. I think the what we are suggesting, the recommendation we talked about, which is limiting the driveway access and and introducing all the streetscape elements, is our small way uh, to try to to try to humanize. Let's say humanize the uh, the provincial corridor pedestrianize it okay um sorry, with sorry there's another point here about the dark skies um yeah I, I definitely i think that's something that should be carried forward you know in, in development anywhere really all the municipalities where we work today all have um dark sky uh, strategies and uh, requirements for development so i think that's something definitely that could be um, considered going forward Okay, anybody else want to share some thoughts? You turned your camera. Yep, go ahead, Jeanette. Hi. Um, so, loved what Sandra was saying. Absolutely, 100%. Um, I'm the one who's been posting a lot in the chat. And one of my ideas um, 
for incorporating Markdale and the Beaver Valley kind of tourism parts together is having Markdale as kind of one of the designated areas where people need to come and pick up parking permits that they okay. booked in advance, like on the peninsula. So all of a sudden uh, with that, you know, you're, you have a reason that people have to come to Markdale. Yeah. And, you know, and, and then I like your idea with the signage because there are quite a few trails around Markdale too. Yeah. Yeah. So then if that's incorporated in, you know, it's not just a trip to the Beaver Valley. Now you're also having Markdale as a trail destination too, yeah. which some people may not be planning in, in their trips right now you know, right it's more about the beaver valley and the hiking there okay so in answer to your question about ingredients for a successful healthy thriving town for me one of the big things definitely is how does how inviting does it look like okay. does it make me want to stop and if i pull over is it um a place where i could stop and have lunch yeah um and then where do I go with that? You know, so that green space that you've incorporated in, like the village green, really like that. And mm-hmm. if the sculptures could be incorporated in there and they're interactive, so people with families, you know, there's something mm-hmm. for children and, and something of interest, you know, to help people linger. Mm-hmm. So that yeah. there's that interactive element. And along with the... Um, planting um one of the big things and it kind of complements the the gardening element um i can't remember who brought that up maybe elizabeth um like even food forests like the whole permaculture food forest and trying to use you know your native berries and different native plantings that people can eat too yeah yeah so you know just wander along and kind of picking things and browsing and yeah yeah yeah. and for parking I was wondering um you know could it be possible to do something like okay for residents you kind of get a free pass but for non-residents if you want to park on the streets in peak season time okay so there is a fee for that but there would be free parking perhaps um, and I don't know who owns the property. I'm just giving examples like where Chapman's burnt down on Grey mm-hmm. Road 12, you know. So it's out of town just that little bit yeah. or right next to um, the rail trail on the opposite side of Chapman's just further again going near Armstrong Creek. You know, could the free parking be out there to encourage people then to walk into yeah. town and not and not have streets so clogged up you know that there yeah. is that free option right but right. if you want to be closer right well you know that's convenience and you pay for that yeah that is a really great idea that is a really great idea and we will be sharing some examples from other places and how small towns and how they're managing parking and that Jeanette you just hit the nail right on the head the town of Huntsville um, really promotes that most of their free parking is within a 10 minute walk but it's outside of the core area of Huntsville and they have a whole sustainability kind of message of getting people out of their cars and walking down into the town center so that that those are really great ideas and we'll also talk um, share examples of what places are doing and they can calibrate now with all the parking machines you can calibrate those so finely about how much and when you are required to pay for parking so there's a lot of options for the municipality. Um, I wanted Robin. Robin, can you just post the um, third polling question for a minute? Oh, and then I'll, I'll see you. I'll see you, uh, Stuart. Just give me one second with this polling question. Uh, no, let's go to the sec. The third one. Oh, let's just yeah. You know what? We'll come back to the second one. Can you post the, yeah, so the third one. So I want to understand um, kind of how often now you're visiting downtown. 
And now we're thinking in usual times and not COVID times. Yeah, that's, that's, that's kind a good of... <laughs> qualifier. Yeah, let's say pre-2020. Yes, very good point. <laughs> pre-2020. Just take a minute and then I'll come back to the hands. And Donna Teresa has a message in the chat saying she would like to speak to. I don't know if you've seen that. Thank you for that. Yeah I, yeah, I sent a message too. So let's just, uh, okay, so we can close that. So that's a couple of times a week. Most people are coming to downtown Markdale a couple of times a week. Okay, okay, that's interesting. All right, let's come back to the, um, so you can see the results there. Okay, Stuart, go ahead and then Teresa. Uh, good afternoon, um, Donna and, uh, and your team. You've done a great job. Uh, I'm impressed with your major vision of looking at the larger uh, downtown area. I notice, though, that... Uh, uh, Let me just go back to it. Yeah. Uh, you know, that your master plan, I don't know, was fifth option or whatever. It incorporates the whole, the whole area. Yeah. And... Uh, right out to where the current hospital is, et cetera. So I'm not sure. Uh, I, I like, let's say I like, you need to do that plan. Uh, one of the things though that uh, uh, I see, and of course uh, I'm past, I'm looking at a two minute walk if I move to downtown uh, Markdale. I've lived 21 years on Lake Eugenia. So now I'm looking at my next, uh, you know, where, where can I move next? So I would yeah. love to, I'd love to live in a downtown uh, condominium, uh, et cetera, in, in Markdale, if it was built like you're suggesting. Um, I don't do bicycling but I, or cycling, but I do know that we need to consider that as, as uh, if we're having uh, the walkability and that concept. So I don't see yeah. maybe we've got to do some bicycle lanes. Uh, and uh, I, I did my first 22 years I watched uh, in Guelph, I watched Wyndham Street evolve. Yes, that's a perfect example. Yep. yep. Uh, and um, so, and it's well done. And, and it was a failure until they decided to put some, uh, some people down, down. They yes. missed your planning yes. 101. Yes. Uh, but <laughs> now, uh, now it, they, they're starting to put people downtown. It's now yeah. more vibrant. You just couldn't live with uh, university students alone, okay? Uh, and I could walk to downtown. It was a 10 minute walk. All right. Okay. So, okay. Uh, but uh, I, I do like this concept of, uh, you know, looking at uh, what, you, what you are looking at. I, I think, you know, it should be green. It should be, uh, okay. you know, I mean, uh, City of Toronto has a green roof uh, concept. If, uh, if we were in the City of Toronto, Foodland would have a green roof. All right. So it's big enough to to have some of that. So I, I think yeah. I think that uh, uh, parking, moving it out and, and let's say underground and above ground and, and building those kinds of things, I think is, is important uh, not to clutter up the, the downtown. Uh, I do think that eventually, you know, in the, uh, we do have to think about uh, truck bypasses um, and, uh, you know, Wyndham Street has still got parking on the main street, and but there's parking behind, there's parking yeah. to the side, and some of that yeah. could be worked in there. Uh, maybe a little closer uh, than uh, than what you have, though. Uh, the other thing that was mentioned earlier, and, and having spent uh, uh, two years ago, I was in uh, five different cities in, in Italy, and uh, I, I like what I see evolving in your thinking, all right? So um, and center, you know, city squares and, and uh, you know, downtown Wi-Fi and, and attractions and cafes. I mean, I'd love to live in that kind of scenario. Yeah. Uh, so okay. I think I, yeah, I, but I think one of the things you need to build somehow is bicycle paths. Yeah, that is a really good uh, point. Why did you want to talk about how you imagined cycling routes on the main street or? Uh, I imagine that they would happen everywhere, uh, possibly, except where the bike, uh, sorry, the trucks are, of course. But I think along with reimagining these streets and making them, you know, more pedestrian friendly, we would um, 
I think we would naturally include bicycles in there, you know, whether it's above the curb or below the curb, I, I don't think it matters, but I think it's important that, um, that we recognize that in the next iteration. I agree with you, Stuart. And, and right, I mean, you, are, you know what's happening yeah. in Toronto, so, uh, yeah. and other, yes. other countries. Well, the funny thing is that when we went out and did our inventory is, you know, there are sidewalks, you know, downtown. It's just that they're, they're just not consistent, right? So there's some sidewalks that kind of end and some are narrower, some are wider, some are, some are sidewalks that are ill-defined. So you know, the, the idea is just to have a system that everyone can understand right. so they know where they're supposed to be. But, yeah, you have 530 new homes approved and you probably got another 500 still to come in the next 20 years. So. If, yeah. I mean, this will make bring us a critical mass. We don't have any mass at all right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah. I think I, I think uh, it's good to have a master plan. So I okay. appreciate it. Uh, Thanks, being the being the Chamber of Commerce uh, president. We also look to have lots of new businesses. Uh, yes. Uh, right. Yeah. And I don't have a uh, a problem at least with four stories. Uh, uh, and I, I do like uh, terrace uh, balconies as well where you can look up to the sky at some of the parts. Uh, I, I know my son lives in, in Waterloo and has a, a terrace a balcony on the sixth floor, but there's two levels of stores underneath and businesses. So mm -hmm. just, just one of those That's things that, model. I mean, again, all this is what I call, today we are dreaming, okay? But yes. if we don't have a plan and don't have a vision, and of course it's up to the municipality to try, because it owns the property can do a lot. Right. Uh, right. You're absolutely right to make yeah, this happen. Absolutely right. right. So, uh, yeah. I respect uh, I respect what you've done, uh, okay. and uh, like like how we've started. Okay, thanks, Stuart. Thank you. And and absolutely, councillors are on the call and listening, and and going to be listening on the next session as well. Teresa, go ahead, and then I see Sandra. You've got your hand up too. Okay, hi there. I tried the icons, but I didn't have to raise hand and all the other ones disappeared immediately. Oh, okay. anyway, um, to, go back, <laughs> to go back to the question. Yeah. Um, as far as I don't really have another town in mind, but I think okay. one of the issues um, that I found from being in more touristy towns is how to have the balance between uh, yeah. shops where tourists are attracted yeah. and where local people want to go and can afford yeah. to shop. So yeah. as we know, in many tourist towns, the locals don't go, they can't afford them, they're not interested in what they're yeah. selling. So I think that balance between attracting outsiders and providing for insiders is important. Mm -hmm. And I think yeah. COVID has um, given us a, a lot of people the idea of trying to shop local. Yeah. So I think there's a lot of potential for new retail and yeah. that also then ties into the building that if we have people coming in and living in town and yeah. working in town, that's going to bring people onto the streets and support the other retail. Exactly. And again, right. we can cash in on COVID from the number of people from urban areas who've come up here and they've been working from home. Yeah. Now, maybe they'll find, oh, there's a nice little office on Main Street right. about the cafe or about the right. bakery. Maybe I could rent that space. Yeah. So I think, um, again, we could cash in on COVID, on the yeah. experience of COVID. The other thing um, someone mentioned, I think this may have been Tasha, related to the Beaver Valley sessions, is taking the pressure off the valley by making Markdale attractive, mm -hmm. making Markdale mm -hmm. an attraction. Because I think a lot of people come out of the city to be out of the city. Mm -hmm. And if the, if the downtown, downtown Markdale was attractive, that could mm -hmm. take some of that pressure off the valley, I think, mm -hmm. uh, because not everyone wants to go hiking or cycling. Yeah, they still want to get out of the city. That's a really good point. And, and that reminds me of something that I heard when I was doing some initial one-on-one -on -one conversations. And, and one of the people that I just spoke to talked about an idea of nodes and corridors. And I think that's exactly what you're speaking to, to look at the existing centers and hamlets and villages as a focus for some of those uses and then connecting them exactly. on the roads, the trails. Yeah. And that's where the accommodation can be. That's where the restaurants can be, you know, and um, people can do both if they need to, or if they want to, but yeah. I think it could take a lot of pressure off the valley. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Teresa. Thank you. And then I see Sandra, and then back to you, Stuart. Sandra, go ahead. 
Oh, uh, I, Catherine. And I see you, Catherine. Okay. Catherine and, and Yin, you can help me um, if there's other people that are waving at the screen. So I got Sandra, Stuart, and then over to Catherine. Sandra? Thanks, Donna. Very quickly uh, with regards to truck traffic. Yeah. Uh, two kinds. We have uh, obviously what is happening with Chapman's and they're moving their finished goods down to their warehouse south of uh, town. We also have through traffic and that is, you know, Highway 10 is the main corridor going up to uh, Owen Sound and such. Yeah. Uh, there may be, it may be worth a discussion with the likes of Chapman's and other partners on what ideas they have on uh, how they can avoid downtown or perhaps um, yeah, just, that's a good idea. That, just something that may, may have uh, up their sleeves. They're very creative as we know, the Chapman's folks. Yeah. So I would uh, just highly recommend that's... a discussion with them. Okay, that is great. Thanks, Sandra and Stuart, and then over to Catherine. Yep, Stuart. Yes, can you hear me? Yep, perfect. Okay, good. Uh, one of the things that I, I wanted to uh, mention was uh, uh, looking for the big picture, of course, is the rail trail itself. Yeah. It's a corridor that's owned by uh, Gray County. And uh, just uh, going back in history of, uh, of Toronto, and at one time in the late uh, middle 20s to 30s, maybe even a little later, there was a radial line, which was an electric trolley that went from the city limits to Sutton. Okay. Uh, okay. So what one? So one of the things that that rail trail, which uh, which I think I've mentioned uh, before in the reimagined thing, was to think of perhaps a electric uh, train or electric whatever bus whatever that runs the rail trail, takes us uh, all the way from Dundalk, which could connect with the Orangeville, but all the way to Owen Sound. So that way, okay. uh, I mean. I th that's just a future thought. Yeah. Uh, and, and I know that there's a development uh, pending that's on the west side of uh, the rail trail that uh, someone's purchased some land there that hopes to build a lot of homes in there. So I just think okay. you need to, and the county is also looking at that land, uh, uh, which is a former Chapman parking lot, which is owned by the county to do yeah. something about affordable homes. So we got to look okay. in, uh, uh, of what's happening in that particular area uh, okay. and, and think of the think of the future. So can you go uh, back to that slide, Donna? The, the bigger, bigger one? the big the bigger one. Yep. Yeah. Is, um, is that where we're showing that connection through to the oh sorry. There, oh, no. Sorry. Yes, yeah, sorry. I've yeah, got the myself big yellow line. just one second. <laughs> that's okay. the uh, that's the rail trail. Um I just have to figure out where I am. One second. Go forward. I think I'm Am I going there? There we go. There. Yeah. There it is. So, so we're the yellow. So the yeah. yellow is the rail trail. And Stuart, yeah. you're talking about, is it the, the orange line that I'm showing just north of there? No, no, no. I'm talking about use, utilizing the yellow line, which is the rail trail, mm -hmm. which goes all the way to Owen Sound. All right. Yeah. yeah. Now, so ultimately, I'm just thinking in the grand scheme of things, even at the county level, mm -hmm. of, of making sure, I mean, it's being protected now by the county. But utilizing it as some sort of uh, corridor uh, for you know uh, transportation, affordable transportation between Owen Sound and, and and Dundalk, and I and of course I respect the fact that there are some walking trails around there that could be developed. So we're not taking away, you know, from the walking trail concept that could exist there. I just think if I was doing you know dreaming, I would uh, I have expressed that uh, back. Uh, when I first started on council in 2006, I had this dream. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. My father used to take the uh, radio line from the city of uh, from the city limits in Toronto to Sutton. Okay. As a traveling salesman. So. Okay. <laughs> like, okay. Like, a, like a regional corridor. Donna yeah. reminds me of the of the um, the train that we were just talking about in Uxbridge. In Uxbridge it goes to Stonewall. Yeah. 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 That's right. That's a tourist. That's a tourist thing, though. I used to live there, so I know about that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Catherine, you're up. Happy to hear your thoughts. There Hi, you go. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Just a couple of ideas, drawing on a number of of aspects, trying to highlight or showcase some of what we already have here. Someone already mentioned about you know our pride of history. Yeah. And it 
brings to mind um, the town of Chimenez on Vancouver Island yes, yes. that really showcased yeah. their art, their history and their culture through all the murals that yes. they have painted yeah. all around the town. Yeah. You know, we have, you know, I, I, I love to see the murals that we do have, but I think that could be really developed yeah. either throughout either end or throughout the town core or along yeah. the walkways. Um, it really worked for Shamanis and, and yep. as the idea of, you know, how to get people to come and stop and then walk around, enjoy the murals yeah. and then sit down in an outdoor cafe, uh, you know, yeah. taking some of the pressure off of the Beaver Valley. Um, you know, it has a number of components there that I think could be really, really attractive for local uh, yep. for locals as well as um, as for visitors. And one yep. other idea I had too is just, uh, you know, I was thinking about what does draw people? Someone mentioned like St. Jacob's. Well, they've got theater. Um, mm -hmm. Other places have museums and have, I thought, who doesn't love Chapman's ice cream? It's gone <laughs> across the country. And I wonder if Chapman's might be interested in creating or co-creating with the municipality um, their own ice cream museum. Um, you know, <laughs> that would be another yes. sort of interesting draw to Markdale. You know, yes, a lot of people know about Markdale because of Chapman's already who don't yeah, live that here. That is a so. great idea. Yeah, that is a great idea. Co creating an ice cream museum. Who would not like that? You are right. That is a great idea. So, thank you. Uh, okay, thank you. I am, um, does anybody, are you seeing any, any other hands? Um, um, are you in anything in the chat? See, you're getting most of them. I think Stuart, your hand is still up. Oh. Are you? Yes. Uh, before you come to Markdale, you come to Flesherton. Yes. So let's not forget about that. Uh, there's a whole cultural community there that, uh, uh, that we need to embrace as part of it's 10 kilometers between the two. Yeah. But uh, I think that uh, there's, uh, there's some beautiful property. There's a wonderful library there, civic center, yeah. and uh, there's room for a development of, uh, of, of culture in that particular area as well. So I think we need to co-join the thinking uh, uh, for Flesher and Markdale. They shouldn't be, they shouldn't be islands. Uh, and uh, I, I do believe that, uh, that we need to have a, a vision think for uh, ultimately municipality does own land in, uh, in, 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 uh, in Flesher and actually owns uh, nine acres of uh, uh, right behind the, uh, the library there. So anyhow, okay. I'm not suggesting anything other than let's think, uh, let's think Gray Highlands as well. Okay, good point, very good point. Um, now I've got this uh, drawing up on the screen and Wayink, are you able to use the annotation? Get a line and a, pick a color and mm -hmm. mark it up. Okay, so I just wanted to take a minute again, cause there's 25 people in the coach. It's a fantastic size. Because um, we are gonna be using the, this material, this content to put out in an online survey. And so I wanna drill down into this plan and get people's comments on anything we should be tweaking on the drawing. This is really meant to be a workshop kind of working session. This is work in progress, just some initial ideas. And so any, I think when you're looking at the plan, so the buildings, like why you mentioned, these are the ideas, housing, housing, um, new retail, commercial retail, location of the park, how we're showing streets. Is there anything we should be tweaking on this plan before we put it out. I think the notion weighing it's buildings that are uh, in the sketches we showed up to four stories. Mm -hmm. On this particular scheme up to four stories, you'll notice that on the last scheme, we said it could go up to six, depending on where it is and whether it has a transition to the surrounding. So we're not precluding that it could go higher. We think that there is appropriate places for it. And um, we haven't done the studies yet, but I think it's, you know, we want to leave the door open to that. Because I think we need to also bear in mind that, you know, um, that the value of the land and the ability to attract developers and users is going to be uh, premised on how they can make it economically feasible. So we have to always remember that as well. 
So I, no, I see, I see uh, Stuart and Sandra have their hands up and Tasha and anybody, you know, call out to anybody on the call who hasn't. Uh, and, and Christopher, that's all I have to go on. <laughs> so I'll do Stuart and Sandra and then Tasha and Christopher. Okay, go ahead, Stuart. And Yang, if you can have your marker ready. Yep, go ahead. Uh, one thing I'd like to see is just an opportunity of, uh, uh, certainly I need, we need wide sidewalks on uh, Toronto Street uh, uh, North, uh, particularly on, on the West side. So I don't have any, any challenges yeah. there. Um, one thing would be if I was looking at uh, perhaps uh, downtown, uh, uh, the center square, the civic square would be in the landscape views area. And perhaps, uh, you know, that that could be, uh, let's say there could be the road on the south side could be moved between uh, the two buildings there and uh, the building size could be, in other words, it would be sort of a, a road through those two buildings uh, mm. and into, into a central park. Uh, yeah. well, you're saying actually allow vehicles on this pink line. We had imagined um, it as a pedestrian place. I would allow I would allow uh, vehicles up to a uh, uh, to a certain point, but in the middle, I would envisage a very public uh, area uh, where I would have gardens and uh, public art, etc. So that would be my okay. focus to move mm -hmm. it into the landscape muse area, move the building on the south side there, you know, close closer back to the road, but certainly uh, all having a lower level of uh, cafes and, uh, and enough room there. I just, uh, I just was feeling that uh, uh, in, in my travel experiences, that's, a, uh, that's certainly an option. I'm not, I'm not okay. suggesting it's right, but it's certainly an option. Yeah. Um, okay. I see where well, you're coming from. And I, you, know, you mentioned earlier that you had, you had visited recently a lot of places in Italy, and I think that's wonderful. I do like the idea. Right. Um, right. And I think one of the, yet another challenge that we're dealing with is this idea that we need to have more road frontage for the park, or we ideally would like that so that it's more visible within the, in, within the public domain. I think this, um, this notion could be a longer term notion, but it is contingent upon um, getting access through this adjacent property that we don't own. Where, where is that? Mm -hmm. So in here, where I'm going to highlight in yellow, we don't own this portion outside of the red, and so we have um, we have access along the bottom here in this lane, but we right. don't have access here. So, and then we would also have to rely on, for instance, the beer store to provide a nice frontage to that green. So there's a lot of things, you know, that would well, that would um, this this location would involve us thinking about. So if I was dreaming, and I am, okay, so mm -hmm. I would say that there might be other locations for, yep. for that. I'm not against drinking beer by any means, but <laughs> uh, I just say maybe there's some other, other places it could yeah, be. Yeah, absolutely. In the same way uh, where the Circle K is, uh, yeah, I mean, up in here. Uh, yeah. you know, that's, uh, that's something that I would consider as well. And, and Argyle Street, uh, where the current hospital on either side could be something, could be very interesting uh, a development as well. So I, I, I'm just throwing these things out because uh, um, I haven't been to the beer store recently, so I'm on caffeine. So okay, <laughs> okay thanks, Stuart. So on my Thank list, you. I have I had Sandra, then Tasha, then Christopher, and then I see Betty and Roy are queued up too. So Sandra, do you want to go ahead? Can you put Teresa on the list? She still can't use her oh, hand. Teresa, yep, yeah, and Teresa. Okay. Thanks. Um, uh, so go ahead, Sandra. Thanks, Donna. Um, I, as a uh, person who is coming up to view and see and participate and be involved in Markdale, yeah, I'm north on Highway 10, and I, I'm coming into town, and the one thing we're envisioning is green space, is trees, is, you know, the, the, the ability to see past the trees, mm -hmm. The avoidance of walls. Um, when we put up buildings, whatever it may be, the recommendation is it's not a wall that's just happened to have a few trees in front of it. 
specifically just um so blah, blah, blah. i'm trying to get my bearings here actually where the word road is written with the question mark yeah. just uh yeah. there imagine driving in and that building there that's on the northwest side if that was just a wall with trees in front of it i think we just have to be very cautious that if it's not accessible from the street as business yeah. or whatever, w windows and yeah 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 be very cognizant that um it has to it has to have a facade that says this is markdale it doesn't right. have a brick wall yeah with a girl on it it just that that era has come and gone yeah um so how do how do the buildings get positioned that meet with the cosmetic view we see yeah why do you want to just weigh in on that a little bit about what the guidelines yeah. will prescribe do you want to flip over to the um, the perspective sketch on um, the other side? It starts to show it a little bit. So anyways, I can speak to it, yes. So um, Sandra, yes, absolutely, 100% agree with you. They can't be blank walls. It's, not, it's something that we, we always discourage, blank walls um, um, along any public interface, even on the back sides. So um, within the, well, with the development of the site, um, I would assume there would be guidelines in place that talk about the articulation of the ground floor being, um, you know, very permeable, visibly having a, a high percentage of um, fenestration and windows and, and not just the fake windows, but real vision glass. We would imagine that there should be a requirement for front doors and patios and any kind of active spaces in the ground floor should be concentrated and focused along these frontages. And when I talk about frontages, I mean the Toronto Street frontage, as well as this new um, frontage that we've created that fronts onto the, to the active park space. So um, your point is really well taken. And I would even go as far to say that when you're coming down south along Toronto Street, we would probably want to have some guidelines in place that speak about the north face of that building. So yeah. you know, the building yeah. wraps around the corner. It's the first thing you see. So you want to make sure that it's not the you know, the, the delivery door. It's not the service door. And it isn't a blank wall once again. So, yes, yes. yes, that's perfect. Perfect. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, thanks, Sandra. Okay, then I have uh, Tasha, then Christopher, Teresa, Betty, and Roy. Ta uh, Tasha, go ahead. Okay, I think I'm on. Um, sorry, I've gotten distracted with all these good ideas. I forget what I was uh, what I was answering. Um, so just just anything we should be tweaking. Yeah. So so um, I I was going to talk about connectivity, but I, so I just want to say um, rather than tweaking, I just want to highlight that I'm really glad that you guys have caught you've got that you've got the. Okay. <laughs> so thank you. Kudos, thank you. Um, I did have a question. Does Markdale have anything like a compatibility of design um, restrictions for development, like? You talked about in the small town characters that yeah. work. Um, they're you know they're they're compatible with each other. They're all brick. Yeah. They're, they're um, we're going to be making some suggestions as part of the work that yeah. we do, and that's um, it's a really good point, and it's really important. And compatibility does not necessarily mean it's absolutely the same, but it's respectful no, but it, and it, it recognizes the context. And yeah, do you want to add? And, that? And, and, well, and in ones that I know of, they they do uh, recognize the local heritage. So, for example, you know our brick, especially yeah. the white, the white appointed corner trims, and and yeah. those, you know that mm -hmm. really speak Grey okay. Highlands. Okay, uh, that kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, small note about uh, the downtown area and parking and street fronts. Um, and cycling, they all come together in bike lock zones or bike lock mm -hmm. parking areas. Uh, and there's different ways of doing it. Uh, some are less pedestrian friendly than others. Um, so yeah, that's definitely okay. for the downtown. And then the one other thing, if we could blow out to the big picture, the 10 minute work. Um, I can, let me just- uh... for Gateway. I'm going to just save this and then uh, I'm going to, I'm going to erase it and we'll, okay. um, Sorry. we'll start again when we come back. That's okay. Yeah. Well, we can come back to that later. I don't want to. Uh, that's okay. I can, we can add on to this. So you want me to go to the big, the big drawing? Well, we don't even have to go there. I'll just say what I want to say about it, which is that, um, uh, 
in the context of uh, the heritage and yeah. museum or and the murals and the history um, that obvious it seems obvious to me that those those four gateways are are perfect places okay. and educational and and um, informational pavilions whatever whatever yeah. um, preferably incorporating something active and age okay. user friendly <laughs> and yeah. all those yeah. things you know yeah um, yeah, so I think that was the other thing. And and a final little note, if I may, regarding things that have really drawn my attention in downtown cores was um, in some cities, small cities in southern France, every individual tree is labeled and you know that they have a record of every individual <laughs> tree and it shows that they care about their trees and I love that. That is a great suggestion. And I, yes, you are absolutely right. They identify them all. And, you know, on that, in some parks, on the sign for the park, they also identify the individual benches and waste receptacles and all the amenities so that people don't forget that this park has six benches and two waste receptacles and a kiosk and an information board just so... Yeah. You make sure that you always have that suite of amenities in the park. Okay. Thank you, Thank Tasha. You. So Thank then I, I have uh, Christopher and then Teresa and then Betty and Roy. It's Melanie. So, oh, sorry, <laughs> Mel. Yes, you told me that. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Can you can told me that. that. That's okay. Can we go back to the uh, slide that you were looking at? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, and I apologize if you already addressed this, but the uh, and I missed it, but the dotted line with the arrows that are on the um, this one, what is that? The, line? the northeast line? section, yeah. So, what mm. what does that represent? Oh, my, yeah, that's um, that's representing a pedestrian link, which is where we understand there's a desire line. There, no, we understood there's a desire line for people to get on from the west side of the street across this block to the park. Um, that may not be exactly the line, but we thought there was an opportunity to roll the cafe patio into that into that space. So, you know, if people are going by there anyways, wouldn't it be great? Because right now, when we go out there, it's a it's um it's a patio for the restaurant, but it isn't the most I would say it's not the most um, beautiful or green. And so, if there's an opportunity to create a greener pedestrian way, even if it's not planted trees in in soil it could be potted plants it could be an arbor it could be something um, that would work with a patio on the north side and then work with the muse on the south side to create a a link for pedestrians to get through so my my only concern there is um if you're talking about eliminating the access for vehicles through there because um, yeah you're not? No, no, oh. we're not talking about eliminating it. There's got to be ways so that they can maybe both use it. Um, yeah. I didn't measure how wide it was. It looked kind of wide to me only because it's mostly paving, um, but there's got to be a way to share the space, let's say. Yeah, so um, when COVID happened and the patios were allowed to open last year, we were able to extend the patio farther into that laneway. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think we kind of maximized how far we could go into the laneway um, to still allow for trucks to go through because trucks do go in there to make deliveries. Right. That, uh, it, that Mark Delvet is also accessed through that laneway as well. So I just wanted to kind of okay. highlight that. That's something that we, we would have to really look at. Um, uh, and then if we're going to use that for a pedestrian walkway, you know, safety concerns, right, for pedestrians walking through if there's also trucks trying to get through there. So, right, right. so Melanie, you, you own and operate the Fire and Ice, correct? Yeah. Yeah, okay, now I'm putting the pieces together. Okay, this is terrific that you're on the call. Can you put your patio on the other side or is there's no room there either? No, no, right mm -hmm. immediately on the other side of the building is the parking lot for the Scotiabank. And we own like a couple of feet on that side. We don't own the parking lot that's that's right there. So mm. yeah. now if you're talking about, um, ex you know, um, expanding on Toronto Street there that a patio mm -hmm. could go on the street that's something to look no, at. No, we're not. And just to be clear, I know everyone was talking about Toronto Street, but because it's a provincial highway, we haven't we haven't actually made it narrower or changed its profile. The only thing that we did was um, 
delineate where the, let's say the curb is, right? Where the edge of pavement should be um, and where some of the, over time, some of the bleeding of that apron has gone and taken over what would normally or traditionally be a boulevard. So we're not narrowing it. So trucks can still get through there. They have the dimension. It's just that we're changing the look and feel of what that shoulder looks like. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's so just no, something to maybe look at a little bit uh, deeper is that area there. Yeah. 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 We, we might do a, a little perspective sketch for that mm -hmm. area in particular, just to have a a bit of a deeper dive. Okay, okay. thanks, Melanie. Uh, That's great. sorry. I just had one more question, and I know we're looking at this. Maybe this is still at a macro level, but when we're looking at the uses of the muse and the so, I'm now I'm talking about the um, property across the street. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, uh, one of the things I was thinking was looking at innovative ways to use technology. So, for example, um, you know, when we look at parking, let's look at electronic charging stations or. Yeah within the uh, public use spaces there, are we, are we looking at um, having public Wi-Fi or public charging stations or, um, you know, sometimes in, in some uh, downtown areas, I've seen like the large tablet uh, style wayfinding yeah. signs, yeah. right? Yeah. But where do yeah. I find, you know, I'm, I'm in this public area, I know. I'm looking for the, the whatever, the library. And you coffee, can coffee, and coffee, coffee and lunch, coffee yeah. and lunch, of, and I, you I go like right history, there. That sort of thing. Yeah. No, well, that's exactly that is my pet peeve too. That we just do a, such a bad job telling visitors where the businesses are and where the amenities are and the attractions. It's just too hard to figure out where you are with most mapping. But some places do a fantastic job of that. Okay, so then I have. Um, Teresa, and then Betty and Roy. Teresa? Right. This isn't so much tweaking, although maybe it's a big tweak, is I'm wondering, have there been any projections about the expected population of Markdale to support the increased retail and residence um, buildings that you're talking about? Has any, yeah. Do we have any idea? Yeah. Or is it, a, is it a build it and they will come? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that Wai Ying, do you want to? I, you know I don't have those projections. Um, I know that the have they done, do you know? It do is you know, part of from council knows. I don't know. Sorry, was somebody was that you Wai Ying or somebody? That wasn't me. Sorry. That was me at Sandy. I'm sorry about that. Um, I was just saying the official plan has our projections for the next 20 years, hence mm -hmm. the our very large water tower now. So uh, it is available that information. But you know what, um, Teresa, that is a really good point. And we should um, have a summary of the population projections um, on the web page. And when we do our next round, Great. that's a good point. Thank you. Thank you. Please remember that Markdale is a service center for a much broader area than just Markdale. Yeah, yeah, thanks, Jim. Yeah. Okay. Um, Betty and Roy. Yes, um, I, I chair a, a joint committee of the Hospital Foundation and uh, the Hospital Auxiliary. Uh, we have a Pennywise shop, uh, which is looking for a new location. And uh, we've been looking at a couple of spots and it, on, on the drawing that you have on the screen now, and you have circled, uh, yeah. that's near 11 Toronto Street. Yeah. That's the brown building that's there. Um, that's not an ideal place for Pennywise, but it is a reasonable place. You have, uh, you have inexpensive goods of every kind. Yeah. Um, and we would like to create a shop that allows both, um, recycling, reusing, et cetera, and all of the material that we receive is donations. Uh, but there has come a second uh, spot where we're looking at too. So if you could move that to the larger uh, area where it goes down towards the hospital. Yep, one second. See that okay. 11 Toronto Street really needs major renovation. So I um, appreciate what you have on the screen there as another idea. 
So you mean down here, uh, Betty, th this is the area or even farther south? Further south. Okay, so. Where, where the maybe, new hospital is. Okay, um, mm -hmm. let me just go back here one second. I think it's only a couple of shots away. This one down here where the new hospital is? Yes. That's or the new, uh, the new hospital here? Yep, and so yeah. where? Okay, that's great. Um, the first comment that I'd like to make is, as you have the pink area, the core, yeah. and, then, and then you have huge um, uh, real estate or uh, residential area down there, we'll call it near Tim Hortons. For yeah. The doctor. Yeah. yeah, and then you have the hospital on the other side of the street. Yeah, I would like to be sure that people from the down core, downtown core can walk to the hospital. Okay. And so, and there's two reasons for that. A, you want to visit, you want to be able, you have Gray Gables that might be coming uh, retirement residents. And so I would like it so that the retirement people can walk downtown safely and not just on, on Toronto Street, because there's so much mm. going on there. But a more, oh, I see. So a more some... peaceful, yeah. quiet, so there's aesthetic this... walk. There's a connection here that I identified in the yellow arrow underneath here. I wasn't Wait. quite sure who owned that land, but you know, there's a logical connection that extends the existing street through to the new hospital site. I think we yeah. need to look a little deeper yeah. into... Mm -hmm. I'd like that to, is. I'd like to, that, that yellow arrow where you're pointing, I think, mm -hmm. there's a, a vacant lot there that has been suggested that we might put the Pennywise shop there. So oh. we're working with Gray Highlands, who owns the property, uh, right that there. maybe we would build a new shop there. And where's the site? Where is it playing? Do you want to mark it on the... I believe you're saying that it's somewhere in here, where the air, where you have the air. Yes, I yeah. think that. So it's approximately. it's approximately, but it's right across mm -hmm. from Great Gables on the path on the road that goes to the hospital. Okay. okay. So um, you know that if we include all of that in easy walking area. Yeah. That, that will bring some traffic to the Pennywise shop as well. And of course, that's related to the hospital because what we're doing is raising money for the hospital. That's right. what the Pennywise shop is all about. Okay. And we do produce a huge amount of money that goes to the hospital. So we want the residents to remember us, be aware of us and where we are, because that's an easy way to support the hospital's growth and their equipment. Could you see the Pennywise shop in any one of the vacant uh, storefronts on Main Street, east uh, or west? Looked, yeah, we've looked at them, um, but we are in a spot where we are very confined. We need we need five thousand square feet. To Whoa. Get. Okay. Big so space. that's why okay. the eleven Toronto Street it does have five thousand square feet, but this property. Uh, I'm understanding that it's about 30,000 square feet the property is, mm -hmm. and that there's a suggestion that we have the shop there as well as a, a little park at uh, where people from Gray Gables could sit and, and look out. It's also uh, a little park yet that uh, people could wait uh, for getting into the Pennywise. We always have a long lineup, but uh, mm. I hope that doesn't continue if we have a bigger shop. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, but that puts that area into the walking area of mm -hmm. downtown. Because mm -hmm. it, it, it is, it is a, a five-ish minute walk, so it's relatively close. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank oh, you. I, I have a comment while you're you're on. Yep. Go ahead, uh, Roy. Uh, two comments, actually. One, um, I'm not right involved with the Pennywise shop per se, but um, I'm on. I guess it was on a committee that that was looking at different locations for it, and nothing's been decided quite yet. But 
once they have a location, um, I, my interest would be relating to how it contributes overall to sustainable development. Okay. And uh, so what I would envision if they have to rebuild is uh, a, a structure that is a pushing towards what you might consider net zero or reduced carbon emissions. Uh, could have solar panels, it could have geothermal heating, it could have uh, some green concepts built into it or around it, etc. cetera. Um, so what I would like, if I, had, if I had any say in it, is a building that is, a, as climate change continues, uh, it um, is looking forward in terms of structural design, building code, and the whole bit. And, and how can you get maximum functionality without breaking the bank? Okay. Because, because Pennywise okay. is a charity, or yeah. I mean, I should say the auxiliary is a charity. And Pennywise is a big part of fundraising for that, for the auxiliary. Okay. So, um, the, I just want to say that what I would like to see, it's, a, it's an upcoming problem. So there would, the auxiliary is looking for a place fairly soon. And the, the trick from my point of view is how can Pennywise do a redevelopment kind of action? Yeah and maximize long-term value for the community. Okay. Okay. The structural ideas and the whole bet. Okay. The second point I wanted to make is talking about walking and pathways and bicycles. Um, I can say most of what I saw, it sounds like the bicycle, bicycle routes would follow the streets. Yes. Um, Sometimes it would be really nice if you could move some of some areas, move bicycles off the street, and maybe pathways through the community. Uh, I suspect as you get closer to the downtown, uh, property boundaries in terms of ownership might not allow a lot of connectivity for pathways. But I think it's something to think about. Okay. Okay. Um, Wayne, do you want to weigh in on that before I go on to Stuart and Sandra? Only to say, yes, I agree with everything. I think that that's a wonderful um, goal to set for, a, I guess, a sustainable lead design, uh, lead ambitious building, especially for that use. So yes. Okay. Um, Stuart and then Sandra. Oh, Stuart, unmute. Yes, there one, you of, go. One, one of the things that uh, uh, when I was looking at that slide that we had the uh, that Roy was uh, was talking about yeah. uh, was the uh, the northwest quadru quadrant of uh, of Gray Highlands where the uh, that Highland Trail goes through. Uh, yeah. I think I think we need to identify in that north uh, up in the upper. Yeah, it's not quadrant. in it's not within the municipality oh, okay up here okay yeah so that, this, uh, this portion of of orange yeah. lines well yeah. yeah it's not in greyhounds yeah and so i mean i didn't want anybody to be insulted including chapman's that uh, you're putting roads in their property so on the on the east side it's okay because uh let's say that is in at least in in gray highland so and then there's mm -hmm. another little uh odd section of west gray that's uh along uh, around county road 12 as well so anyway i just wanted to say that okay. the other thing that i wanted to say is one of the things we would need to consider if we're going to have a beautiful downtown would be uh, moving the uh the power lines underground like uh, yeah. like uh, mr harold did in fleshman yeah. <clears throat> so anyhow just want you to know that that's something okay. i know it's millions of dollars it but, is uh, it, yeah. it could spoil the beauty of uh, 
of any of your concepts having the uh, the power lines above ground. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Stuart. Wai Ying, do you want to just um, weigh in on the uh, what it means when you're showing orange lines? Yeah. On this um, kind of property or out here, just anywhere. Yeah, it's notional really just to show that and, and irrespective of the of the municipal boundary or delineation between the two, I think what we're trying to show here is a a comprehensive community. So whether you know it's in the adjacent municipality or this one, the idea is that that development is limited uh, and that there is a natural frame to where development should and shouldn't go. Um, the orange lines are suggesting that you have this existing network of roads, connections that are built and sort of end and they would be the natural places to continue with that, that grid, mm -hmm. the, the fabric of the blocks and streets. When we looked at the, um, the internal driveway, say through the Chapman's facility here, you know, it may not be necessarily a road that goes through there, but definitely um, some kind of link, you know, whether it's a pathway or whether it's a pedestrian sidewalk, I think any development, if and, er if and when it may ever happen, um, should recognize, recognize that connection. Because the whole point of this diagram is to say, you know, you have this amazing natural asset that just hugs your community. And why wouldn't you want as many connections and access points to it as possible? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just wanted to make you, make you aware of uh, where you're treading. That's all. Yeah, yeah. And Thanks, Stuart. Putting yeah. a trail beside the sewage lagoon. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Sandra, go ahead. I promise this is the last time. No, that is to talk I, away. I adore our Pennywise. Yeah. Um, it's a brilliant idea of it being positioned where, um, where it's been suggested. Yeah. Uh, today, uh, that is um, town, town mm -hmm. land. Um, it's part and parcel of the pump station for the tower. Mm -hmm. uh, it is at the base between um, Queen Street and Eliza. The road that leads into the new hospital does not connect those roads, however. Um, today, there is, let's just call it a man-made trail. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. People use it. Uh, to go from the parking lot of Grey Gables onto Eliza. So they've actually been driving over the land, making their own driveway, just to Whoa. get on Eliza to avoid the lights, okay? So Grey Gables is aware of that. They've informed um, their folks not to do that. And I do believe there's going to be um, barriers put um, along that road to stop people from going up to that road. All right, just mm. a head up on that. What? As for Queen Street, the, um, the land falls from the end of Queen Street down about 15 feet. Do you want to just mark on the map, Waiying, what we're what So we're the road learning? that, Sandra, you're talking about is this one here. Uh, yeah. And then so you're saying that the connection isn't there. It's a, it's a beaten path yes. over time. It's is it the first... I it's okay. the first one there to the west is the first okay, this, line. That's this one. one. Yeah, it leads to Eliza. Okay. And then the one further west, which you just made long pink there, yeah. is, that's Queen Street. Mm -hmm. It's a dead end today. And yeah. to go from there down, literally down, to what yeah. I, I think is Pennywise's great idea, um, is about a 15-foot drop. So it may entail some really challenging trails that kind of idea knowing that it's it's not a good walkability even today yeah. um but just it's a great idea um the last thing i'm thinking is i think chapman should do an ice cream trail around their their uh <laughs> around their building <laughs> yes with samples with samples along the way okay and that all goes with we have this beautiful landscape hugging and i love that word hugging yeah. Parkdale, let's not be restricted to, you know, there. Let's just make yeah. it fantastic for, you know, it's a five kilometers around town or take this yeah. 10 kilometers and that kind mm -hmm. of job. I love that. Well, I got yeah. a lot of things to talk 
to the Chapman's people about now on my list. That is a great idea. Someone mentioned public art and artists yes. earlier, and we've yeah. heard a lot about the artist community through the other visioning session. And I think that's yet another thing that we could layer onto this yellow dotted line, and it might be an art trail, you know, within the yeah. landscape. And, you know, you could have an art competition where people could submit their uh, their proposals for something that speaks about the community, about the nature and all that. And that could be, which community yeah, yeah. was it, Donna, that had this kind of art in the landscape, in the forest that you kind of just stumble upon? Yes, yeah. yeah. yeah it's I'm going to find a picture of that. But so, Sandra, the connection that you mentioned here, which being a 15-foot um, drop, we can, you're right, we can, it'll be challenging, but I think that if we have enough space there, we could kind of do like a switch back switch back ramp potentially i think the connection is important to, to betty's point of having you know bringing people not along toronto street necessarily but coming straight down um yeah to the I mean, site, so. absolutely always ideas and ways of doing that mm -hmm. um, we're absolutely changing the makeup of that area um by all means we've got this yeah. hospital going in and just yeah. to fun when i talk about change um, that having been a field at one point, we enjoyed the likes of turkeys and deer and all kinds <sighs> of birds. Well, now there's construction. So all the predators yeah. are now in my backyard. Oh. So they have decided that oh. my bird feeders are the best thing they've ever enjoyed. Oh. And every day I'm finding all kinds of dead critters. Oh, So things oh like, goodness. yeah, like change, there's going to be change. Our, our, our wildlife is experiencing it too. Um, yeah. But as for... How you know the, the type of ramps or whatever we need to do to get people mm -hmm. move to our environment, then by all means has to be done. Yeah, okay. I think the desire line is there, and with the hospital there, the the you know that desire line is going to be even stronger. Um, Robin, can you just uh, do that a uh, second poll that we started when I switched my mind to do the third one? to do them out of sequence. And so let's just finish. Can we, can we go back to this? Oh, can we relaunch it? Okay, so I just um, wanna understand of those on the call owning businesses in Markdale and not just so I understand. Okay, so Melanie, you may be our only business owner on the call. What about Stuart? Chamber, oh. chamber. Oh, I see, yeah. He's muted. Oh, there's He's another chamber, one. Chamber of Commerce is on. Okay. Uh, we have two, okay. That's great. Um, okay, thank you for that. So let's end that poll. We'll end that poll and just own a business. So, okay. Okay. Everybody can see those results. Results. I'm assuming everybody can see the results on the screen. Why Ying? Yes. I I turned it off. Okay. Okay. <laughs> right, it was blocking go. my. <laughs> okay. Yes. Um, I am going to just uh, advance. We're, um, we are going to wrap up in a, a few minutes. I did want to go to this sketch, Wai Ying, you were uh, making reference to it in one of the questions we had about avoiding blank walls mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. the, on the, at the ground level, especially. And well, that is a yeah. really important and, point. And, and, and to add to that, not only on the ground level, avoiding blank walls, basically anywhere other than loading areas that nobody from the public can see. So any, any building that faces the street, we're gonna want windows and awnings and doors and better materials and highly articulated. And we're gonna to want to, to the point about compatibility, we're gonna make sure that you know, some of these datum lines um, reference and relate to um, their neighbors. So there's a lot of things to think about. These are very quick sketches that Robin put together that are beautiful, um, but yeah, the details haven't, haven't been figured out and there isn't a design, but it does show you sort of a big picture of that possibility, yeah. yeah. So yeah, again, here, here's a view of that building that was mentioned. So, you know, doors with glazing at the corner. Um, and then as you walk down the mews, we imagine if there's um, uses in there that would like a ca cafe or patio space, it could spill out onto this pavement area where people are walking and overlook the park and watch people, you know, walking walking by along the street as well as down 
um, down the muse. So that's, um, we asked this question about what makes healthy, vibrant town centers. I um, skipped over this one because I wanted to drill into the plans we had presented, but we certainly heard about opportunities for change. We didn't focus on obstacles for change, um, but for us, we always want to focus on what, what can be changed. And I don't know if people want to just quickly weigh in on if there's anything that jumps to mind. I mean, we heard a lot about Highway 10, maybe some of the limitations that might present. Um, we heard the comment about what the population projections are, and we're going to follow up and, and put that on the project webpage so we know what projections, so everybody can see what projections we're working to. Um, Donna, there's a couple of questions in the chat box, and I want to clarify it since everyone's still in the meeting about the yellow dotted line, the proposed trail that we're showing notionally within that green frame. Yeah. Um, it's the question is whether it's municipal municipal property or private property. Um, I'm not entirely sure, but I think it's mainly within the NH. S, the natural heritage system, because the mapping that we're showing where the green, the green features are, is where we're where we're building that green frame. And so I would imagine that it's located within the edge of that natural heritage system. So that would be public land. Um, anything, so anything else in the chat box? Some some questions about next steps from Christopher, yeah. who has to jump off. Um, uh, and there's a question about the doors and windows impact uh, efficiency through the winters. Yes, that's always something to think about when we're talking about efficient, um, efficient design. So yes, it's always a tricky balance to have a lot of glazing and activity and be able to see into a, a store, but we got to think about the heating and cooling as well, for sure. So in terms of next steps, we are, uh, we have another session um, at four o'clock, just like this one then we are going to use the content that you're seeing um, to make an online survey to push out to the community and to get their reactions of whether they're generally agreeing or disagreeing with some of the direction that's being illustrated in the concept plans. This input is really helping us um, clarify how we're describing it and we're going to tweak some of the options in the plans. Then we put out the online survey, we collect those results and then review all the input that we receive and refine the drawings that we presented today. We wanna to have a second session in June. Um, again, the municipality is doing a great job having a project specific web page will post uh, information on that, including these recordings and the slide deck. And then please um, tell your friends and family to share their thoughts after today by emailing directly to actdev at greyhighlands.ca. Um, definitely don't wanna contain the conversation in any way. So keep talking about it and sending your thoughts. Does anyone on the call have anything we wanna want to share before we end the meeting and end the recording? I wanna make sure everybody has a chance to share anything they wanna share. Oh, yep, go ahead, Betty. And Wayne, can you keep an eye on the chat box too, in case anybody wants to say something? Go um, ahead, Betty and Roy. That's right. Uh, I do, it's just, it just crossed my mind. Uh, they're talking about rebuilding the school. Uh, uh, Beavercrest, I guess it's yep. called. Um, has any thought been put into how that, as a redevelopment, would tie in with the bigger picture in terms of traffic pattern, um, landscaping, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, Wai Ying, do you want to touch on that? Mm, sorry, can you? Um... So the implications of redeveloping the school mm -hmm. on um, traffic patterns or pedestrian flow. So the school is gonna be redeveloped as a school. Yeah. 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 Um, so you're right thinking now. it's just going to replace the existing condition is going to. Yeah. So, I mean, typically when we deal with schools, it's really that, um, you know, the one and a half hours in the morning 
and then that crazy frenetic one and a half hours at the end of the day. Um, yes, it will have an impact on the flow of traffic, but it's isolated to those two times where, you know, there, a traffic study would need to be done, let's say, that takes into consideration the entire area, as with any development. Thanks for that, Roy. There's a couple of, sorry, comments yeah, in the, the chat box. Um, somebody's mentioning, Jeanette's mentioning challenges um, about just the vitality of the existing small businesses as the um, okay. as new businesses. I mean, that's always a that's always a consideration as well. Like we're we're suggesting that there's new uses in here. We don't know what they might be. You know, can't be quantified at this point. But yes, they'll have an impact, certainly. Um, on what we're seeing as sort of uh, empty empty storefronts even today. Um, so the challenge, the obstacle of getting those um, repopulated with thriving yeah. businesses. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm Anything trying else to scroll. Think? I'm trying to scroll down here. Let's see. Oh, good. Michelle's answered. Um, Cost for sustaining gorgeous green spaces in the years ahead. Yeah, part of yeah, the yeah. yeah part of the operation, long term maintenance operation cost for the municipality. Uh, uh, yeah. So okay. That's, that's all I see. There. So I really, really appreciate everybody taking a chunk of time and joining this um, meeting this afternoon. I really do hope that there's going to be continued conversation over the next several weeks and a couple of months on this project. And we really look forward to the next time uh, we can come and meet you again and share the results of the online survey and what we learned from this, the second meeting we're having at four o'clock. Keep an eye on the project webpage so you can hear uh, what, the conversation from the second session so you're fully informed and then keep an eye out for when the survey is launched and make sure you share that with everybody you know we'd love to get great response to that so with that i am uh, going to bring the meeting to a close and ask robin to uh, stop recording for us and thank again everybody for joining Thank you to 